I won't have another chance like this for a week. I've only got 48 seconds to make it to the next step of this quest. What's the rush? Well, I'm on a speed run from Tutorial Island to full quest completion to get the fastest quest cape ever. Oh, come on, we're gonna make it get in there. We did it with 21 seconds to spare. Now, why was this so important? RuneScape only updates once per week. Now that I've started the cutscene in this quest, I've completed the next step. However, normally I'd be trapped in this cutscene for over two minutes, but by making use of the update, I will get kicked out of the game early, saving me two minutes. There we go. I've saved two minutes on my speed run from this. Credit to GE Challenge M for finding this method. All right, the moment of truth, logging back in. Did this work? Let me see, come on. Let's get going here. I think I need to go south for the next step. Yep, Quest Helper thinks it worked. Oh, I think it worked. Can I flex? Yes, I can flex. I just saved over two minutes though. And that is Below Ice Mountain completed. Welcome back to the Questcape speed run. To get you up to speed, I've just finished all the skills necessary for the quest cape. So all that's left is to quest. The problem with setting up that cutscene skip is I had to do a bunch of other things in the minutes before so I could line the time up perfectly. So I did Corsair Curse, I went and I started Eagle's Peak quest, and I also combined a few steps by starting A Tale of Two Cats. In The Tale of Two Cats, you have to find Bob, and now because I want to reduce my time played on my speedrun account, I can use another account to hop worlds and find him. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Bob's dead. Bob's dead on this account. I've been looking for like 20 minutes trying to find this guy. Oh, I okay, I found him using my pure. This has been a headache because I can't locate him with the amulet. So I have to hop worlds and run around looking for Bob. There's no way. I lost him. Oh, where's Bob gone? You literally had one job. I've got him again. I have been through struggle for this quest. I haven't wasted much time on my actual account, but in real life, oh. Now, before I get onto the big ones, the final challenges I'll face, the grandmasters of the game, yeah. let me introduce you to the quest that had absolutely no importance on this speed run. My man, no life's not glamour. That's why we act like it is when hammered. Fee for the club, not a kilo of grammar. Is this actually the fastest way to gain favour? I'm waiting for the weeds to grow back once, hopping worlds and then raking the patch down and repeating. Maybe this is outdated, let me know. Throne of Miscellanea. Who could have seen Royal Trouble coming next? I haven't really mentioned it so far, but where appropriate, I have been waiting for my minigame cooldown to kick in. So for example, I can go from the west side to the east side of Caldegrim. And, you know, probably saved about 30 seconds in the process. A very forgettable tale of a quest that really had no significance on the speedrun. The quest itself, Dream Mentor, isn't particularly interesting, but the big requirement here is 85 combat. Now, this actually changed the way I did Slayer back in episode 3. So, during that episode, I was barraging and also using melee. But it would have been faster to just train Slayer with Mage. However, that wouldn't have got me 85 combat, which is why I chose the route I did. And luckily, I'm just 85 combat right now. Are you ready for the most thrilling? Thrilling quest line in old school RuneScape. There's Rag and Bone Man 1. I think Rag and Bone Man 2 is possibly a candidate for the laziest old school RuneScape update of all time. At least there's something somewhat interesting in this quest. I can light the logs and then I'm going to hop worlds. I'm wasting no time in game while the stuff is cooking on the hob and I can log back in. Dinner's ready. Rag and Bone Man Part 2. Personally, I think we need a part 3. Jagex? As always, no mere ways with the Grand Seed Pod has me covered on this speed run. Flying around the world has its perks, but unfortunately, I can't watch the Gnome Ball in Karamja because it's blocked. Uh, until today, that's where our partner NordVPN comes in. Link in the description. My favorite thing about NordVPN is that you can use it to watch so much more content online. Using a virtual private network masks your IP address so you can appear as if you're anywhere in the world. I was recently in Cyprus, so I couldn't watch anything on the BBC, but that's no problem because with NordVPN, I can appear as if I was back in the UK. But more than that, NordVPN keeps you safe online. You never know who can see your data and it's best to keep it secure. Nord also offers threat protection that shields you from malware, trackers, and ads. Dark web monitor notifies you 
issue if somebody leaks your data and MeshNet allows you to connect to your devices remotely and securely. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash solo mission to get two years of Nord with four months free. It's risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the description. Before I started my speed run, I did some research and found that the fastest quest cake ever is five days and three hours by Mars is a lie. Now this gave me a good baseline, but then I realized this happened over a year ago. Now, you might think that I'm at a severe disadvantage one year later, seeing as there's been six quests released since then. However, in November 2022, Jagex greatly increased all the XP rewards from Master and Grandmaster quests, which means that I'll never have to train agility because I can just use my quest XP on it. So in theory, one year later, the quest cape speed run is faster. At least, I hope it is because otherwise I'm gonna look a bit silly. <laughs> Agility XP, that's all this means to me. You may be thinking, wouldn't it be good to get Barrow's gloves earlier? But remember, I did slay it with bracelets, so I don't think these were needed. Do you rate the setup? This is actually my best range of gear. Well, maybe not the flippers. A kingdom divided. From this point forward, everything is planned perfectly to fall into place. I had some reservations about some of these harder quests, but it turns out all you need to do is stack brews and run around a bit. 50k agility XP from Beneath Curse Sands. I could go and leech a tombs for combat XP, but I don't think it's worth it. I'm all pied up. 70 agility. I saved it for this moment. Come on, first time. No way, the speed run. You know what? This quest actually feels very good when you get 60k agility XP at the end of it these days. Yo, look at this thing. The next snake. I think this might be my spirit animal. The Fremnic Exiles, done. Finishing off, 69 Slayer, 70 Crafting for Monkey Madness 2. What? I can't start it. Plans to precision, he says. What are we missing here? Oh, the balloon. Have you ever thought about someone doing this quest on release day? <laughs> Going through the pure pain and struggle to put it on the wiki for everyone else. Now, in the interest of speed, I won't be following the quest helper. The agility path is way slower. I will be taking the tank path. 10 minutes till the update hits. Three, come on, two, one. Oh, nearly made it to the cave. You, no, my, do I lose my stuff? It could get worse. Did I unlock the crook tunnel? I did. Thank God for that one. Okay, do I get my stuff back? The grave's right here? Oh, I got my money back. Let's go. Look what I'm working with here. I am level 63 range, and that is only from Cannoning Slayer. And some of the quests just require range. It is what it is. There's no way. You... It's looking kind of close. Thank you. No bruise left, damn. And the headache is over. Monkey Madness 2. I got a ton of XP there. Come on, Mr. Gnome. Give me that 70 Slayer. Agility, Thieving, Hunter. I needed all of that. I'm actually going to take 30 seconds out here as well to train some range because I get some XP for free. Two lots of 50k. That is 65 range. I can now wear a Dragon Crossbow, so that might make the difference on Dragon Slayer 2. Hello, old friend. Seen Bob, have you? All right, here we go. Here's the big one. Can I do Dragon Slayer 2 with 65 range? If not, I'm going to have to go chinning at MM2. Ah, we're chilling. We're chilling. Full bruise always win. All right, guys. I know we're all thinking it. I'm glad Bob's dead. What the fuck? Dragon Slayer 2 for a ton of XP. Give me that. The mining, the agility, and the thieving. All needed. All needed. 69 mining plus three boost from the dragon pickaxe and I should be able to clear this thing. Making friends with my arm. Let's do it. 70 construction for Song of the Elves and 70 mining for Song of the Elves and some agility. The perfectly precise plan strikes again. The general shadow. There really is no time to waste. I'm going to get full ghostly and do a mini quest. So yeah, I am um, the reason that naked people get attacked in the world is look at me go, mate. I'm risking 300 mil. I'm actually out here in the full-on paid actor. 
The penultimate, Secrets of the North. Give me that 70 agility. Not trained once. 70 Hunter 2. And now I can't do Song of the Elves because I need 70 farming. 70 farming. One of the reasons why the speedrun's taking so long because these take three days to grow. Here we go. Song of the Elves, the final quest to wrap up this speedrun. There it is! Finally, the Quest Cape speedrun is over. 293 quest points. We are done. The final playtime, 3 days, 14 hours and 35 minutes. A lot faster than I thought it was going to be when I was planning this out. Sorry, I forgot the uh, speedrun isn't quite over yet. There we go. We've got the Quest Cape. I have fully enjoyed planning and producing this series. I hope you've had a good time watching. And that's the Questcape speedrun. I'm going to log out before I waste any more playtime because there might just be a future with this account. <laughs>